Hi, ich bin Tim Geier, willkommen bei Weiß auf Deutsch. In diesem Video treffen meine britischen Kollegen Menschen, die mit künstlicher Intelligenz Jagd auf straffällige Pädophile machen. Und wir erfahren, warum es dabei nicht immer um die DNA der Täter geht, sondern oft auch um deren Hände. This is a further interview of Jeremy O'Ketch, uh, who's been arrested uh, on suspicion of rape. Where did those incidents take place? No comment. Is that you in those clips? No comment. Someone who is going to abuse a child will often record the incident because they want to relive it or they want to be able to sell on the black market. The area of the perpetrator that is most frequently in view is the back of their hand. Can I have a look at your hands at the moment? No comment. Can you put your hands out on the table for me? I help the police to identify individuals from images. There are an estimated 50 to 60,000 suspected paedophiles in the UK, requiring investigation on an entirely different scale. We've helped the police to secure over 40 life sentences for abuse against children, but also about 500 years of prison sentencing. We think of DNA as being the absolute pinnacle of forensic science research. Let's not underestimate the human hand. I'm Sue Black. I'm a forensic anthropologist. Forensic anthropology is about the study of the human or what remains of the human for identification purposes. So whether that's working with the police in a body that is found unexpectedly, it might be a homicide, it might be working in war crimes investigations as I did in Kosovo, or following the, the tsunami where we have a mass fatality event. Wherever a human needs to be identified and linked back to their name, then that's the work that we do. The human veins are variable. Look at the vein pattern on the back of your right hand and the vein pattern on the back of your left hand and I guarantee they will be different. And we know it's different in identical twins. So that tells us that we can say to the police, we can match the pattern of veins in your suspect and if they don't match, then we can say with 100% certainty, it's not the same person because your veins don't change. We had a case back in 2006, which was a young girl who alleged that her father came into her bedroom at night and he sexually abused her. And we had some images of a hand and a forearm come into a camera view because she left her camera running on her computer. And the police said to us, well, we've got this image. What can you do with it? We did the comparison and we could show that the vein pattern between dad and the offender matched perfectly. So we go into court and the judge says, well, I've never heard this kind of evidence before and I need to decide whether this is science or this is witchcraft. And he decided for the first time in the UK he would allow the evidence to be heard. I gave my evidence, the jury went away, the jury came back and they found dad not guilty. The barrister said something to me that will stay with me for the rest of my life. She said, you did nothing wrong. Your evidence was absolutely, perfectly understandable. They just didn't believe the girl. She didn't break down and cry. That set up for us a real determination to say, we need to have the underpinning research. We need to be able to say, it's a one in a million chance. It's a one in a thousand chance. Sometimes we only have one anatomical feature. Sometimes we will have multiple features. And the more features we have, the more confident we can be, both in terms of exclusion, but also in not being able to exclude the suspect and the offender from being the same individual. Jeremy O'Ketch was alleged to have abused a young girl and to take videos of it happening. We were asked to look at the videos we were able to link up his vein patterns. We were able to link up his skin knuckle crease patterns across 
all of the fingers that we could see. But he also had a clinical condition. He had something that's called melanonychia. A melanonychia is something that is often found in dark colored skin. And it's where the pigment cells are also found in the nail bed. And he had that in one finger. He didn't have it in any of the other fingers that allowed us to compare it between suspect and offender. Can you put your hands out on the table for me? No comment. 82% of the cases that we take on result in a change of plea. Once the report is there, that evidence is now so strong that they will change their plea. Something like a million images go onto the dark web every day in relation to child sexual abuse. Hands are the part of the perpetrator that are most frequently in those abusive images. That was the logical place to start. We just can't take on all of these cases. If we're working in the process of me physically doing a comparison and writing a report, that will take me a day, a week, a month, and sometimes even longer. We need computers to help us. We launched the app in February of 2020, and the response that we've had has just been amazing. We need lots of images of people's hands so that we can train computers and we need your help. Please go to the HUNIQUE website to upload photos of your hands. To be able to train our computers, we need about 5,000 images. We have not found any two vein patterns that match. We've not found any two freckle patterns that match. We've not found any knuckle skin creep patterns that match. Once the computer is trained, the algorithms get handed on to the police. They can then start to run those algorithms through their database and they have databases of millions of images. And what we're looking for is saying, can we find the image of the suspect? And if we can, can we link that case to other cases that might have happened somewhere else in the world? And that's really exciting because that allows us to make the world a much smaller place. So one of the questions that is most frequently asked of me is how do you cope? I'd be lying if I said that it, it doesn't impact. Of course it does. The most important thing is it's not your job to investigate it. It's not your job to find somebody guilty. It's your job to look at these images, to find the evidence, to analyze the evidence and then present it. And you need to stop and close the door at that point. I'm just a small part of a cog in a very, very big wheel.